cover the history of this space. Luckily for us, we only have two vehicles in here tonight. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm going to cover the history and then we're going to spread out a little bit. Um, I'll do one full round robin to see what's going on with your devices. And then I will see if we have a lot going on, we'll stay for one more round robin. Because again, I'm going to bounce around with everybody, um, with each group and each person to see what's going on with their device. And then if not, I'll regroup us back here um, and kind of go over all of the answers of the... Of the because again, I have to give you questions at this location simply because you haven't done this before. And you guys are going to get the better gist of this as we move along. So, stage one, welcome to your first space. Um, we're in a parking lot, congratulations. Scott's like, I don't give a shit that we're in a parking lot. We've been here before. Um, so, but anyway, this place used to be something relevant to the history of Charleston, which is exactly why we're here. So this place used to be the Charles and Eliza Pinckney Mansion. So their mansion actually sat in the front of this space, facing East Bay Street. Eliza's garden was lined up with five church restaurant and came all the way across. And we are standing in the servant and slave quarters for the home. So that's the layout of the land. Who the hell were these people? All you communication device people, I am not going to be giving you questions like what color was George Washington's white horse, like what we did over there with the big red barn. You're going to get the answers from your spare boxes, and I'm going to start withholding information starting now. So, with that. My, my bad. I do that a lot. Every time. It's okay. Um, so, I'm just like, why is he getting so close? Am I not talking loud enough? Um, it's okay. I was just, I was just actually just messing around with my daughter. Does the same thing. Um, so, who the heck were Charles and Eliza Pinkney? They had a son named Charles, they had a nephew named Charles. That's three different chunks. That's exactly why we look for those secondary clues. In the event that Jeff hears the name Charles, I need to know which one it is. That makes sense. That's why I look for the secondary clue. So, the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. That's a big deal for us, but I hate politics more than everybody here. We're gonna move on. If I don't bring that up, it normally comes up in a spirit box very negatively. So it's kind of like they want their recognition, we give it to them, and we move on. We're going to talk about Eliza instead, which has much better history. Eliza married Charles at a young age according to today's standards. If you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, don't expect numbers like 12 and 14 from the colonial days that she came from. Think of today's standards. The reason why is because her husband was over double her age when they got married. So, anyway, she married him because her father was over in England, and he thought he was dying. So he's trying to bring all of his children home one last time. Eliza didn't think he was dying, so she stayed put and got married. It's 1744. You don't get married in that year to get a green card. We're not a country yet. She did marry him out of love, and this is a true love story. Do not poke the bear here. We will piss her off, and all activity will stop. So Addy, let me know as soon as you get numbers, because as soon as you do is normally when we're going to get started. Um, but anyway, back to Eliza. She was right. Dad did not die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to where we're standing right now. One of those gifts happens to be the plant seeds of indigo. Some of you have been here for more than a day that I know of. Well, again, definitely that I know of. Um, and you guys live here. So indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. That's what we use it for today. And there's not one example in the entire group. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to 2023, right? It's too uh, hot our jeans anymore. Jeans. And I'm wearing canvas. So imagine that. Um, but anyway, when she got her seeds, oh. she didn't know what to do with them. Got a 4.9. Okay, now we go. Now you don't want to give me anything below that 4.9. So it's going to keep escalating up so I don't have a no full notebook full of numbers. So she had to learn from her servants and slaves how to keep it cultivated. It's not always hot here, believe it or not. So when she learned how to do that, she had to learn how to make her dye. She moved into a cash crop plantation by the Stone River, got a hold of her dad and said, our rice plantations are going downhill. We're going to make a killing with this indigo. And we now have an international businesswoman during colonial times. So, that's the boring business stuff of Eliza that usually bores the hell out of kids all the time. So we're going to move on to the crazy weird shit, because that's why you guys are here. So what's going to happen is, with all the communication devices, I'm going to give you guys like a series of questions to focus on. Um, we're going to stay clear what I'm going to ask of everybody. Do not, please do not ask about the children. We are too close to a tragic date where we will make the Pinkney family angry. Do not. All activity will stop, including the little readings like the 4.9 that we just had. So, stay away from the kids. So. Um, I'm actually going to give Jeff and Arian the same set of questions. You guys are going to go after Eliza's death. So, um, believe it or not, she's pretty open about talking about it. So, four major questions that we commonly get the answers to. How old were you when you died? What did you die from? Where are you buried? And what president was a pallbearer at your funeral? So, again, very specific questions. They're not yes or no questions. Um, Hunter, you're going to be looking for Eliza's maiden name. So, that's the name she had before she got married. So, on your word list, we need deal with which Eliza we're dealing with because there were two different wives named Eliza, believe it or not, back to back. First wife, 
explain what those these readings are before we actually spread out a little bit so she's getting pretty decent readings just so you guys know that's electricity in the air if you were to take that device and put it behind your TV set it's gonna read about 40 to 60 she just had a 21 that's half the amount that your TV puts out we're in a space where there's no electricity so kind of put that in perspective your microwave if it's heating up your food is gonna be about 150 to 170 milligauss on that device so the highest I've ever seen it go has been in this location in my 11 years of doing this. 214 milligrams. Oh, wow. We left. I will tell you, I'm a guy with epilepsy. That's too much electricity in the air for the guy with the neurological disorder. Okay. So again, I'm the one that caught it. We got the hell out of here very quickly. So again, it wasn't that it was uh, not going to be productive. I didn't want to have any fear for me when I had a full group. You guys are getting my point. So we're already, the average spike for this location is between 18 to 22. So you've already hit it right in the middle of that. So your new baseline is just going to be 20. You're going to tell me anything above that 20. Um, just don't expect those kind of numbers out of every single type of space. Because um, again, I'm going to give you a new baseline for every new location we go, you know, based on where we are. Um, so kind of keep that in perspective. I am excited about your 21 and the fact that you've seen it drop all the way back down to zero, or at least close to it. Because again, if it was something electrical, it would show up in a pulse. So it would be like a 21, 18, 21, 18 drop down a little bit further, not 21 to nothing. So again, you kind of get that in perspective for the way that actually works. So somebody just came by you and said hello, that's all that means. So she just got a little too close. Um, probably not close enough to make it go up any higher. Um, but Landon, you got your questions, right? So what happened to the mansion? When did that happen? Anybody with a communication device, do not get frustrated if you're not getting direct answers to your questions. And you can ask them out loud or just stay focused on them and just however you're comfortable. But keep in mind, this is why I like to use so many different communication devices. Jeff, you can ask questions. It might show up on Hunter's word list. We never know where the answer is going to go. I always use a minimum of two types of communication devices just to make sure like, we have something to back up the other pieces. Um, so we're not going to go near the two vehicles that are in here. Again, we're very fortunate to have most of the lot on a Friday or Saturday. This whole thing is pretty much filled, and we're stuck with the middle. And I think that's normally why I keep these groups down to 10 is because we do run into spaces like this. Um, but yeah, let's spread around and kind of see what we got going on. I'm going to take a quick peek at the weather just to make sure we're still going to be clear. And then I'm going to start bouncing around with all of you. Have, has anybody heard anything yet, by the way? Yeah. I mean, mine's kind of like, um, didn't you hear it? Summer. Sure. Or it's like, like, a, like almost like a radio. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, so, so what did the DJ say? What did the song lyrics sing? Like, those are the things you need to tell me. Okay. So again, it's not always looking for what's in, in the white noise. It's a matter of if the DJ said, we have clear weather. I want to know that he said we have clear weather. Okay. Um, and it's not for informational purposes. It's more like, does clear weather have anything to do with where we're at right now? Okay. Yeah, like my name sounded like, you know how it's clicking back and forth and you hear the DJs in between? Yeah. It sounded like a DJ straight up said my like a female DJ was like, Arian. And I was like, so weird. Okay. That's and that could be like the ending of a week of a word though. Right. So and that's librarian. That's, whatever. Right, yeah. Exactly. So that's why I'm like, it's it's probably legit. Like I'm, I'm not like doubting it. No, I'm not surprised. It just said we had a lot of rain. As I'm sitting here talking about the weather. Yeah. Yeah. And it rained the last two nights. Yeah. yeah. And then some. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it's actually been raining. I think I haven't had a tour since. Thursday or Friday. I've lost track of how many nights I've been off now because it's just been weird to be at home. Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, so, Hunter, what are the last three words you got on your list? Summer recording console. What was the last one again? Console. No, awesome. summer was the first one. Oh, oh recording it console. Went up to console. Summer recording console. It went up to 26. There was a couple of them that, there was four of them that had C, like a C in a row, like that started off with C. It's an interesting observation. Like, I don't think I've ever paid attention to that. Um, so, Landon, go ahead and get yours unmuted. Um, and then we're going to spread out for a minute. Um, 
And you said it was up to a 26? Yeah. So now your baseline is just going to be a 25 for the rest of the time that we're going to be here. Because um, again, that's usually where things start to get. We don't need to know all the little guys yeah. now that we know that something's going on. Okay. Well, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 the radio stuff is good too. Are you recording oh, no. yet, Anna? Uh, yes, it is. Go for it. Like, we got the whole space. Just stay away from the two cars that we got. What am I, what's my last question again? When did that tragedy happen? What happened to it? When did it happen? That. Something about this, something behind you. Yeah. It's like go back there then. Are you behind us? We're listening. I don't know how much you got a chance to play with it last night when you guys were, you know, back at the room. Yeah. But um, in the dark, again, if you get little things that pop up, mm -hmm. I'm always going to like, hey, I'm going to watch it for a split second. I might rewind it just to make sure it's not a person walking by. Yeah. Uh, but I'll take a screenshot and I'll brighten it up and that way I can see it much clearer. So if there's a full figure there, and sometimes it might look like there's somebody, because she has like a purse that's going yeah. past her back. So it might look like there's a secondary person behind her. It, unless they have different motions, like they're standing in a different way. If it's the exact same motion, it's just picking up like a silhouette. What? Okay. Did you also pick up on the fact that it will catch your shadow? So it's never a person lying on the ground. It's just an absence of light because you're creating a shadow. Mm -hmm. So it will make it look like there's a person over there. Okay. So even if we were shining on the wall where all three of our shadows are there, it's going to bring up a person every single time. Okay. Sorry, I know you guys are trying to listen. No, no, I, I'm listening, yeah. Yeah, we heard some. They broke in and said, like, was it, like, look behind you? It said, look behind you. Okay. Yeah, and we are. <laughs> <laughs> Something weird. Yeah. 
It's not easy to do, guys. Yeah. This is why we start with the beginner methods. Like, right. And not take you straight into the white noise. Yeah. Like, that's even harder. I think I'm supposed to ask, like, what president was the pallbearer? Yeah. It's like kind of like going that corner over okay. there. Yes. What color was your house? Turn it like through here, like on this other, like through the thing, or just do like a 360. You hear that one? They're like, we're testing, we're testing. Kind of like swing it. said you're crystal clear. Something like you're crystal clear. What color was your house? Did it say blue? Yeah. How old were you when you died? How old were you when you died? You don't know by chance what color the house was. Kind of. What do you have? I asked and I thought I heard blue. No. No? Okay. No, but the word blue is the color of the dye that she made. Okay. Oh, the indigo, I did hear blue. The and they were asking her what her favorite flower was. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I am going to actually call this one simply because Addy doesn't have a whole lot of numbers. You guys aren't giving me, like, defining clues. 44, I mean, I know 44, it's not right. I know. Yeah. But on the word list, he has the word enough that showed up for a second time. It's almost like Eliza's kind of tired of us being here already. <laughs> um, so what's weird is I'll explain. Yeah, you. we've heard look behind you, and then what was it? Like, some, you're crystal clear? You're crystal clear, yep. Yeah, it said that very clearly. Yeah, like, it like broke in. Interesting. So I am going to kind of rein everybody in because Arian's not getting a whole lot. You did get the word dig, which is a gardening term, and which mm -hmm. is common for this location. I mean, the word list normally generates it. It's just weird that she heard it on a radio station. Right. Because um, she said she heard it several times. I love this shirt, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> so I just happened to see the <laughs> yeah. Mario Kart. Um, so what do you got now? Uh, is this able to get numbers? Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yep, it'll pick up numbers. I am concerned about his last term said enough, and I was just telling, you know, Scott that Addy hasn't been screaming numbers at me, that kind of thing. I normally pass through this location before I meet with you guys every night, just yeah. to let Eliza know how many people I'm bringing. I didn't get a chance to do that tonight because me and my wife were sharing a car because mine's broke down. So it was a mad rush to leave the office and okay. go straight to the corner, and I didn't get a chance to tell her. So it was kind of like a, maybe she's a little, peeved off right. with me kind of mentality. Yeah. So you said you had another 44? Is that the other one? All right. Well, we want to be respectful. So. Right, and yeah. that's what this location is. What do you got? Maybe a fluke, but Hunter's following me around and I keep asking Eliza how old she was when she died and it said count. I think. Am I missing something in here? Maybe it wants me to count something? No, well, but you probably missed something in real time anyway because you've never done this before. Yeah. I am going to rain this one in just because of kind of the actions that are going on with what's going on with, with the devices, not you guys, but the devices. So I'm going to bring us all to the back. Well, explain. Start the back.
So, you have the word relief, relief. right now? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so let me explain. So apparently something wants us to I heard the number 15. Yeah, 15. I don't know if that, means, that means anything. anything. They were 13, I think. At this point. Yeah. Um, 15 is a speculative number of when her father went back to England to leave for the two plantations. Um, some say she was 14, others say she was 15, so it's, it's speculative. Okay. Um, but one of the reasons why I called this one kind of short is simply because every night, well, let me put it this way, I used to get a lot of ghost hunters that some of them want to be disrespectful in this space. This is a prominent English woman. So the yo, 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 Eliza kind of mentality doesn't work here. So I was getting very nasty messages disembodied through your guys' spirit boxes, and I'd have the recording of it. It was like, please just leave us alone, going over 13 different radio stations. Wow. So every year I change this up. I take out one space and I add a new one. This was the one I was going to retire simply because I didn't want to piss off, you know, the whole painting family. But I kind of gave it a break for a few weeks, but I still started at Big John's and got my point. I just kind of skipped over it and went to the next location. But I keep coming back here simply because the place is super active and it's a great learning curve for you guys. It is so active that if you guys can't capture something here, nothing's going on that night. And so again, it's just, it's very rare that that occurs. Every night, I always pass through here to let Eliza know how many people I'm bringing. Tonight, I did not get that chance. So I just explained to Jeff because me and my wife are sharing a car right now because mine's broke down. Which means she got home from work and I had to bolt out the door to drive an hour to get here. So once I left the office, I didn't get a chance to cut through here like I normally do, just to let her know how many people I'm bringing. But when I was telling you like, hey, it's kind of light, he gets the word enough. We come over here, we get the word relief. She all of a sudden, the minute I'm telling Jeff, like I may call this short, she gets a quick 44 and it drops right back down to zero again. So again, I'm gonna say like, we're gonna call it on this one just out of respect, but I am still gonna give you all the answers to the questions that I gave you, just so you know what I'm looking for when I'm going through your media. So um, if you wanna keep that running, you can um, in that fashion. I know it can be uncomfortable, so if you ever get uncomfortable, it's your night, it's your video. So just stop it whenever you want to, but before we start walking, by all means, go ahead and stop the video. Okay. So let's go over these answers. Whenever I break out the tablet, it should just kind of enhance all of the, you know, answers to everything that we're covering um, at that particular location so this is eliza lucas pinckney so maiden name being lucas the first wife was eliza lamb pinckney so lamb and lucas are maiden names that we currently get here if we ask for them um, this wife was married to charles at the age of 22 he was 45 so again creepy age gap back then creepy age gap now so I've already mentioned that my oldest daughter is Eliza's age, which means I'm close to Chuck's age. So you can kind of see where it's kind of a creepy age gap for me. Um, Landon's questions of what happened to the mansion. One of the few pictures we actually have of the mansion, this is fire damage from the Great Fire of 1861. In the events that we get a term like fire burning blaze coming out of one of the communication devices, we will get normally two or three numbers of the date of when this occurred. This happened on December 11th. So 12, 11, and or 61 will pop up. Very specific numbers. You can see where I get super excited when the number 61 shows up. And there have been nights where we've had the word fire in all three digits from the date. So again, take that for what it's worth. So that's where I get excited because that to me is a confirmation. Every tour in town is going to tell you about a fire. Um, you guys probably heard about a couple on your ghost tour the other night because we've had dozens of them. This particular fire, this is a map of Charleston. This is obviously the fire that took out the Pinkman Mansion. It literally went from one side of the peninsula all the way to the other. This is about five to nine million dollars worth of damage back then. I don't know what it equates to now because inflation changed again yesterday. Um, but you could, we're standing on a tiny little green dot on the east coast. So that kind of gives you an idea of how big the fire actually got. And yes, it took the water to be able to put it out. The children, I already asked you not to talk about the children, but I have to give you a little bit about them just so you know what I'm looking for when I'm going through your media in case you find something for yourself. Very right, you know, there's four children grand total, by the way. Um, so if you ask her like near the date of one of the, you know, the tragedies that I told you not to poke the bear with, she will tell you that she only had three children. Let me explain why. Charles, you already know about signer of the Constitution. The next one we talk about. Right. The next one is Thomas Pinckney. So Thomas fought in the Revolutionary War battle. He was shot in his left leg, captured by the British. When they released him, he was left on a, on a cane the rest of his days. So you can see some of the terms that I get around Thomas. So left leg, revolutionary, limp, anything relative to that injury. Yeah, I, I saw a crawler over here. Is that anything? No, nah, he wouldn't crawl. So he's definitely not a cane. He's a, he's a man of respect. Did it say that is right? Yeah. It said, it said that is right. <laughs> Very Rocking clearly. to my world. Yep. So this is where we, that's what I call a real time moment. Because it's not factual but it is part of the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So again, you're gonna s s spot see that quite often throughout the entire yeah. evening. Um, but the next child is one we don't poke the bear with. This is baby George. 
Baby George, you can already see where this one's going, right? So Baby George, the weird thing about him is in June of 1747, he, he died and he was born. So we don't know if he was days old or weeks old. The weird thing about that is his death certificate only says June 1747 in the birth and death hall. So my guess is he was at least a few weeks old because you wouldn't have named a child until they were christened back in those days. But he also doesn't have a headstone or a grave. That's the weird part. My theory behind that is that the family, the church may have allowed the family to actually mummify the baby and keep them right here in the home, waiting for the mom to pass away, Eliza, so he could be buried with her. It's kind of a creepy thought to keep a mummied baby in your back living room, right? So it's going to get even more weird, by the way, when we talk about Eliza's death. But there's one more child. Her name was Harriet. She married Dick. Yeah. I don't know if that means anything. June of 1747. June is the sixth month of the year. Okay. This is why you guys keep me around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harriet married Daniel Ory, Ory County's Myrtle Beach area. It's about two and a half hours north of here. Obviously, you guys aren't from here, but that's where she lived. We don't hear from Harriet very often, but in the event that we do, you gotta remember that it's two and a half hours away from us by car. Eliza didn't have a car. There was no cars. What did it say? It said, I'm tired. Yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, we'll piss her off a little bit. Anything where Harriet's name shows up, we will get terms like quill, ink, paper, published, lots of letter writing between her and her mother. So again, not a two and a half hour car ride, much further distance for them back then. Eliza's death. Which, by the way, Jeff and Hannah, you guys can pull those earbuds apart so you guys also like can oh, yeah. each other. Um, sounds like you guys got it down. Um, <laughs> Eliza was 70 years old when she passed away. First off, I'll point out, yes, that's a very long time for a woman to be alive during colonial days. Secondly, she was going to Philadelphia, getting treatments for whatever they thought she had, it turned out to be breast cancer. We didn't know what breast cancer was in 1793, the year she died, we're going based off her medical records today. She died in Philly, she's buried in Philly. That should ask two questions in the back of your brain. First one, baby George. If my theory's true, they're going to transport him from here all the way to Philadelphia by horse and carriage. That's a long trek for those of you that remember the game Oregon Trail, right? So somebody's going to get this scary on the trip. It's a baby. I got a trawler. And the number six. Yeah. Yeah, let me know it, if you it get was 47. funny, it was singing, it was like, baby! It doesn't matter, you still got it. <laughs> but it got it, yeah. I got castle, drawer, and something. Does any of those come in? Not thinking them, like, on the spot, no. But maybe when I look at them as a whole. Um, the second question in the back of your brain is, if Eliza is buried in Philadelphia, what the hell are we doing here? I don't actually take you to cemeteries. Believe it or not, it's minimal activity at best in a cemetery. People don't stare at their graves when they're gone. They go to their mansions 400 miles away, which is exactly where you're standing, and it's yeah. an empty parking lot. So don't get misconceived that I'm just taking you to open spaces. There's a reason at each location of why I take you there, and I will always explain it's a why. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting. It says it again. It said it again and again. It said it like three times. It said it three times. Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Yes. Like three times in a row. Grandchild. Uh, so I'm wondering because there is a grandchild, Harriet. Um, so that has a lot to do with like the Redeemer that's over there. Mm -hmm. It was Five Church Restaurant. So I will definitely look into that to see if yeah. today's date actually means something um, in relevance to that. So again, I'll be writing that down as we go into the next phase. Bleed over. So nobody heard anything relative to Big John over here, but we could have gotten things from Big John while we were investigating Eliza Pinkney. We have also could have gotten Pinkney items while we were over by Big John's. Even though these two ghosts are from two different centuries, we're in proximity. They're gonna cross over what's what I call bleed over. The next location is exactly that. It's an alleyway. We're not going to be able to spread out and investigate because it is a very popular ghost tour stop, not to mention it's skinny and narrow. So we're going to go in there and stir some shit up, and then we're going to go to the next location in hopes that we're going to get stuff from the alleyway and to the next location where we're going to be at the same time. But you have to understand the alley. Um, have you guys, you guys have done a tour of town? Um, so, so Philadelphia Alley is where we're heading next. Um, of course, I tell the story a lot differently because we're ghost hunting versus just a normal campfire and marshmallow kind of ghost story. Um, but again, we're going to go in there and stir things up. So here's what's going to happen. I am excited about the 40-somethings that we've gotten on an EMF detector. Your baseline inside the alley will be 7 and above. So don't give me anything below a 7. Ignore your readings along the way. The reason why, the uh, parking meter's electrical lines are underneath the sidewalks. It's going to make it go on. Um, this is really all about the community. feel bad? All about the community devices so I do want everybody with a spirit box especially yours Landon I want you to unmute it as we're walking when we get into the alley you will mute it just so we don't interfere with the other tours that are going to be around us 
you guys are going to see, I just stay out of their way. I don't have a lot of friends in this industry. So again, I'm the weird guy in town. I just, we're just going to cut through them and they'll cut through us and hey, how are you? And that's going to be all it's going to be. We don't want to be super noisy trying to over talk their story. You guys are getting my point. Um, any other major questions on the pink things? Are you guys getting the gist of how to listen to these? And yeah. So yeah. I know you guys haven't heard anything yet out of the SB11, but that's almost a good sign. Because that way you're not... Oh, by the way, who wants to take a guess at who the president was? That was the Paul Bear. I didn't cover that. I have no idea. No history buffs here? 1793? It was Washington. So, here's why that was a great guess. So, normally I get excited more so when you guys can't answer, which I was about to say, yay. So, here's why. When we got over here, I told everybody, I'm not going to give you questions like, what color is George Washington's white horse? I do that on purpose. So, that way I subliminally put George Washington in the back of all of your brains, waiting to see who's going to give it to me out there when I'm doing my round robins. You all pass with a fail. You kind of did a, a, a throwing a dart at the board. <laughs> yes. um, I could see it on your face, but kudos to you. I'll still give you the pass with a fail. Because um, again, I don't want somebody, like let's say Jeff's told me George Washington out there. He's like, I think it's George Washington. I'm like, why do you think it's George Washington? He's like, I don't know, I just know it. I know it's because I put it in the back of his brain and I'm then gonna take a spirit box and give it to Addy and he's gonna get the EMF meter. Because I don't want somebody that's just gonna repeat all the same shit that I've already said. That's why I withhold information on purpose. So again, not to call you out like that because you actually do really well. <laughs> but you're getting my point. It was point. funny, you said it was like, um, I don't know, you said something about repeating and it said once again. Once again. Because I do again. this every night. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's, again, Eliza's, I've been coming here for four years. Again, the woman's probably tired of me. Um, I'm surprised you guys didn't hear my name tonight. So, again, my name will show up probably once or twice a week. And it's usually like a hello, Nick. It just said you're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is anyone here like that you've been talking about in You have the name Will on there? Yeah. Yeah, Will pulls cards into three. No, but it is much, much later. And what you said postcard? No, uh pulse cards. Pulse, got it. Okay. I thought you said postcards. I'm like that would be without right. a bit, like Dylan. Well, Here's the uncanny thing of why postcards stuck out to me. They just actually had one of Eliza's dresses um, on feature um, at the Charleston Museum. And of course, I had to go see it. So I took a bunch of pictures, and they only put it up on a mannequin um, to take you know, pictures for this book that they were presenting for the museum. And then they took it off because the silk that it's made out of is actually very frail, and they didn't want it to be hanging because it's so heavy. Um, so the funny thing is, is I left there with, I bought a book there, and I bought a postcard that actually had the dress on it. So that way I actually had a picture of it on the mannequin without having to pay the full price for the entire book that I didn't want just yet. Um, so my wife said, at least get the postcard so you can at least have it, maybe you can carry it in the bag. And I did put it in the bag, but he said postcard, and then the mannequin was like, but it says pulse card. So it's kind of like, that's why I got all excited. Anyway, let's go talk about dueling and killing people, because that's what we're doing out here, right? We're talking about dead people, right? Yeah, all right, let's go this way. Charles Pinkman, the husband, Holy is crap. buried across on the other side of this wall, like literally on the other side of this wall. So you'll probably get one or two little clues that are relative to Eliza. So you got it while we were inside the alley? Right when we got like right here. It said chop. Yeah, he's literally like, like right on the like other side. Right, literally like right. Did it just say how about underground? I got the word drill. What did it say? How about, how about underground? underground? Because he's buried. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. What else did we get along the way? What number did they say again? Oh, drill. What drill. did it say? It said Three. drill. Three? And now it says dress. It says drill. And then it said dress. Did we not just talk about Eliza's dress? Yep. And did I not just say that Chuck will probably say something specific about his second wife, Eliza? Wow. I like it. The number three to me doesn't mean anything over here. Yeah. At least not to me. But again, it's part of the 10% that might not. Thing. Oh, there's people that might There's, people that people don't. Don't. <laughs> there's oh also God. a lot of foliage in here. Yeah. Um, so again, you're holding it perfect for this specific location. Are you recording already? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Um, so Scott, it's definitely belly level in here, just because other tours do cut through here. Um, so we definitely want to get some footage, but definitely keep it belly level so when that group passes through us, they don't know what the hell we're doing. By the way, when they pass through us, they're going to look at you guys like you're the weirdos. That's okay. That's what we want. Um, so, um, you already seen what was going on with his word list. Uh, and Addy, you know that it's a seven and above. Got it. All right, so let's talk about why we're here. So Scott, it sounds like you've already been down here before. 
um, with the whistling doctor story. So I'm going to tell it. I'm just going to tell it differently because you're ghost hunting. You need a little bit more detail. Just remember, we're not going to spread out in this location. I'm going to tell you what goes on down here, and then we're going to exit the same way we came in, only because I've been kicked out of here, and I will tell you why, because that's the fun part of the story. Um, it actually explains exactly why we're going to the next place that we're going to. So every ghost tour tells the same story down here. It's that of a, this used to be called Dueler's Alley. So this is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. So dueling, like take 10 paces, turn and shoot, for those in the room that have seen Hamilton, because it's usually the reference that I can make where everybody understands. Because um, again, us adults get it, but the kids don't. Sorry. Anyway, with that said, let's talk about this, this guy that came down here. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. He comes down here from Rhode Island. So he moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiance, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. Her attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's cash flow. So he tells Amanda, get rid of the doctor. So, by the way, those Did of you... Did they just Catholic? Those of you listening to the spirit boxes, even as I'm talking, if you hear the song Brown Eyed Girl, it's not coincidence. It's part of his name, and we get it all the time. So just kind of keep that in the back of your brain. It's an easy grab for Brown. Okay. Um, but anyway, going back to Dr. Ladd. He comes to Charleston to prove that he's not after Amanda's money. And on his way into town, the coachman set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a good start to his stay here in Charleston. Somebody was walking by, seeing what was exactly what was about to happen because he lives in town, and he knows the coachman. This guy that's walking by, his name is Ralph Isaacs. I'm gonna stop there for a second because Ralph has the same initials as where the doctor came from. Ralph Isaacs, Rhode Island. We were getting RI all the time on these spirit boxes. I actually have a Ouija board device. It's electronic that uses EMF just like Addy's device. And it basically has a cursor that goes over the letters. Any EMF spike stops the cursor and drops the letter to a different row so we can see it as a whole. I bought that specifically for this location. I call it a digital Ouija board, but it's called an Envoy. Um, we have gotten the letters RI as I'm bringing up Ralph Isaacs at least five times in the past six months. So you kind of have to take that for what it's worth because R and I are nowhere near each other in the alphabet. So kind of put that in perspective. Anyway, back to Ralph. He tells the doctor, dude, you don't want to stay here. I know this guy. He's going to try to kill you. Come with me to 59 Church Street. You can rent a room from some friends of mine. You'll be safe and good to go. The doctor took him up on the offer, but they became friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. He's proving his point that he wasn't after Amanda's money. She gets wind of this, she's coming down so they can get married, and now Dr. Ladd became known as the Whistling Doctor. Men whistled when they were happy in the 1780s. I don't have another explanation for that. I will also tell you that every ghost that comes down here will tell you to listen for the damn whistles while you're in the alley. We have three video cameras running right now. Well, two and my voice recorder. If we're going to get those audible whistles, they're going to show up on the electronic devices. You don't have to do it on your own. Anyway, back to Dr. Ladd. Ralph and Dr. Ladd go see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. He gets better seats. That's just the way the hierarchy works here in Charleston. So, they go see Richard III one night, and they're walking home, and they're arguing over the new actress that was in the play. The doctor thought she was great, Ralph didn't. The argument turns into Ralph insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. He gets really ugly, and they went their separate ways. Now, told you Ralph has friends around town, he goes to the newspaper. He puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, he's a disgrace to society kind of mentality. The doctor saw the ad, but rebuttaled with, let's go to Dueler's Alley. We're going to settle this. Somebody's going to die. So they came down, they shook their ten paces, they turned, the doctor pointed his gun in the air, and he shot. He didn't want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up. However, Ralph has his one bullet. Anybody want to guess where he put it? And the doctor, but where? In the kneecap. Oh, Put it in his kneecap. So, Dr. Ladd doesn't die. Ralph just proved that he's still pissed off. Uh, the doctor fell to the ground, but his friends picked him up. They took him home to 59 Church Street. He dies 10 days later on November 2nd of 1786. So, here's why he died. He also refused medical treatment. He's a doctor. It's 1786. Gunshot wounds were a lot different than they are now. He probably just tried to bleed it out himself because he probably just thought he had lead poisoning. So, every tour tells you to listen for the whistles. Again, we may get something audible from the cameras or my voice recorder, but we have gotten the word whistle showing up on these spear boxes. We've gotten whistles from songs or commercials and then the word doctor right after it. Um, we have gotten all kinds of things. The number 59 for the address, um, the name Amanda, Joseph, Brown. You get all of the clues that show up around this particular kind of story. Um, but again, there are also claims of gunshots. I don't have anything of gunshots other than the word gun or shot showing up on a spirit box or wordless somewhere. 
Um, I don't have anything. They have witness. I like Wait, that one. We were talking about like the gun to a doctor and stuff, like uh, about like where you got shot and stuff. It said witness. Oh, there were lots of witnesses because it was a duel and there were people there. They actually had to watch it. Um, so again, I do like the word witness. It is vague, but it is there. Um, but anyway, here's how I got booted out of here. Here's the fun part of the story. This is where things get really interesting for you guys and understand how I actually piece some of these things together. This alley wasn't always Dooler's Alley. There was a wall about halfway between us and Cumberland Street where we came in at. The reason why is because this is where they kept the livestock for the city of Charleston. So this is before it was Dooler's Alley. This used to be called Cow Alley. The word cow shows up all the time too, especially on my Hunter's word list. Now, what does that mean for you guys? On the other side of this alley, those bricks on the other side by Queen are older than the ones we're standing on. Those bricks are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child at the end of this alley because they're older than the ones we're on now. So there's also fingerprint swipes and others. I used to take my groups all the way through this alley when I first started doing this and I pieced this together. However, I know that that kid's not at that brick. Everybody wants to try to get something out of the equipment and I treat that brick the same way I do a grave. That's the last place you're gonna find that kid. He's not staring at the brick that he had to slave over, literally, with his handprints in it. November 26th of 2020, my entire group is huddled around that one brick waiting for something to happen. I'm trying to shoot them along because nothing's going to happen. Secondly, it's outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I'm just trying to be respectful. I didn't realize I was out of bounds. So, the new owner of that mansion came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because her dad's getting screamed at, and we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't work Thanksgiving. The reason why? I worked in retail management, upper management for Walmart for a good part of 20 years. I am never working Thanksgiving another day in my life. Thanks to you guys who go shopping on Black Friday. You're welcome. So, the next day, well, I moved on. I, the next day is November 28th. I got a hold of my partner that I had, and I told him what happened. He's laughing at me, too. He's like, dude, you're only allowed to go down halfway. Or, you gotta reroute the group. So I decided I'm gonna reroute and just avoid the whole situation. What I told my group was, I'm a, I'm a vampire guy, not a pirate person. Obviously, we're discussing pirates next. So, I was like, I've never had anything happen there. What you got? You got a number three. You guys got the number three earlier, yeah. too. Interesting. See? You finally got a number. I told you you'd get one. Uh, I've been wanting one for a long time. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, before we left, somebody on a spirit box hears the name Anne. I didn't tell them who we were going to be investigating. The famous female pirate Anne Bonnie. So, it's kind of like, oh shit, maybe we are going to get something. We go up and around the corner. I told them a little bit I didn't know about piracy in Charleston around there. and. That was it. There wasn't much. Yeah. But somebody else, here's the number 300 coming out of their spirit box. I don't know what it means. I write it down. I do the research for them the next day. We were there on November 28th of 2020 and Bonnie's trial for piracy, November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300 year anniversary Ooh. of her pirate trial. Now that's you guys, cool. I see a lot of eye drops and yeah. you're all like, oh shit, that's cool. No, I was pissed off. Let me tell you why. First off, I already told you, I'm, the reason, there's a reason why I'm not a pirate person. At least, I wasn't. <laughs> pirate stories come from pirate lore. There's not a whole lot of factual data going on there unless you can get into the captain's logs, which is very difficult to do. I have read more books on how to learn how to debunk pirate lore and pirate stories to make sure everything you're going to be doing is going to be factual at the next location. It's also a hit or miss location. Uh, we got another group passing by, so we're going to split the seas and kind of let them pass through us. I got the word, I got the name Sydney. Sydney. And compound. How's it going, man? That's the normal way I get it. Uh, all right, all right, back to your seat. I think that's everybody. Uh, you know, that's they're with Yeah, they all do. Um, but again, normally out of those groups, I normally have the. What are they doing? You guys all have the blinky lights. It said it is cold. Very clear. It's not cold. I know. That's why I'm like. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if it is cold, Scott's going to find it because he's holding his camera very still right now and in the proper direction. Um, but anyway, so the next location is a possible where she could be there at the same time we are. And I'll explain why we're going to be even at that location to begin with. But it's a hit or miss. Worst case scenario, you guys are going to learn a whole lot about pirates that you never learned before. Um, and then again, it, it is a place where we're going to be able to spread out. Keep in mind, we are looking for the bleed over from this location. So you may get things that are relevant to Dr. Ladd. His birthday comes up a lot, just so you know. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Obviously, I want to keep some things hidden and withheld from you. Um, oh, that's the wall. Yeah. So you're getting the muscle in over there. Um, so that comes up a lot. 
Um, I actually, this was part of the footage I had to take last night because was, this was the story that I did my new TikTok on for, and I was like, oh, let me go get the footage I need for the damn TikTok. So <laughs> that's the camera I used, and that's, this is where I came down before it started raining, before I went back to the office. Did it just say pray? pray? It said pray. Hmm. Right next to the church. Yeah, we start getting religious terms over here too, just like yeah. we had the gardening terms over by Eliza. Yeah, we, you start we to see it. Did we do Bible, yeah. Bible study yeah. when yeah. you're walking like that? Did you hear that? What is it? He said, this isn't heaven yet. He was basically yeah. asking if I should be having an exorcism, though. Okay. <laughs> and it said Bible fine. study. Wow. Okay. It said, this I was like, isn't heaven church, yet. And then it said Bible, Bible study. study. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys heard pray and then Bible study. Like, those are obviously religious terms. That's a, that's a slight point for just because we're near St. Philip's. Trust? Again, yeah, it's like common here. We get, you get, yeah. Notice you didn't hear these things until we got close to the church. Like, that's that's the key thing that I want you to take I note I did hear of. Jesus when we were in the parking lot, but I didn't think anything of it because I just figured... Yeah, and it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bible study. Okay. Um, anything else going on with yours, Hunter? Last no. three words? You're still on the number three? Uh, uh, that was four words, though. I'm on Sydney. Like, the past three words are Sydney, compound, and certain. Certain. Addy, any numbers coming out of you? It said cool. Uh, yeah. Seven. Cool. Seven. Number one. Yeah. Like I said, I'm cold and then cool. It's weird. So, seven is part of the doctor's birthday. We're going to see if the other number comes up out of his birthday, because we normally get both digits, so that would be the month and day. Um, so we're going to see how that works out. And no, it's not the number three. Did um, you say 035? 035, like 035. Did you say prayer again? Prayer again. It just said prayer again. So keep in mind, also, your spirit boxes are slowed down. What color is a big red barn? Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. I don't need Rudolph the nosed reindeer. Yeah. So again, I just need the color red. But when you guys hear numbers like a phone number, like 8035, I look at it, do we need the number 80? Do we need the number 35? Yeah. Do I need the number 803? Like, I look at it in all different aspects yeah. just to see if there is something in there that we can reach and grab, if it's that definitive. Yeah. Because again, it's slowed down. And I know it seems fast to you guys, but it is definitely as slow as I can possibly make those machines. Allie. Okay, make this stuff up, guys. I promise you. Have you heard anything else? No, but I keep turning it down to hear you. Oh, okay. And so I don't freak out too bad. <laughs> oh, the gate behind me before we leave. So remember that the Allie... I just heard four. It could have been forward or four, but it, it can be four. Okay. That's not part of the birthday either. Um, the alley didn't go all the way through this way, right? Because this is where they, they kept the livestock. In the event there was a loser to a duel, this was the, the shortcut to get over to St. Philip Cemetery. Otherwise, they'd have to go all the way down to Queen Street and then double back to be able to drop off the dead body. So I like to call this the death gate. The rod iron probably wasn't here, but for the archway, you can definitely see as part of the original wall. Individuals would have died. Probably. Literally, plain as day. Probably can't go in there. Because it's locked and it's actually part of St. Philip's Church once we get up on that next stairwell. Oh, Individuals who have died. Individuals Very clear, who have died. We were talking about going through the You guys ready to learn about some rated R pirates now? You got some good footage for us, Scott? Like, that's perfect, yeah. man. I'm going to yeah. get you a job later. Hey. Yeah. I'll take it. Nobody got my punny about rated R pirates. We're gonna move on. <laughs> my daughter would be so happy to say that. Stuff, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. A lot of vague stuff tonight. And I you don't want to listen to that thing at all, do you, Addy? <laughs> you just haven't even I will, like. Give me the so, did you want to listen to this? No, I was just down and, like, I just noticed, like, she was always distant from it. I'm like, maybe she just doesn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Too trying to figure out the dance. Love it. <laughs> So we're here because of the powder magazine, just so you guys know. So we're going to cover the history of like what we did at the Pinkney Mansion. We'll cover this whole pirate story, and then we're going to spread out like what we did over there. Just 
keep in mind that if this horse passed through here, with those of you with cameras, um, this wall is not your friend. Yeah. Um, tons and tons of leaves on it, so every leaf is in front of another one. That's where you get that gobbledygook, that, that ball of purple lines. Um, so that's kind of, we have gotten people here. We had 30 earlier. We have gotten somebody sitting on that garbage can, can just so you know. Oh, wow. Just um, a person on that. Like over here. You're holding that thing. Out. Like a person. So, but like it will pick up the angles of the powder magazine Birds. itself. So, a ghost is not going to be 25 foot tall no. as high as the. It's going to be, you know, obviously in relative height. Um, when I say there was a person over there, um, I've debunked a lot of them. But there have been two occasions where we actually had somebody sitting over there, like swinging their leg, hmm. and it looks like—I mean, it's the perfect arch of somebody sitting there. America. Um, <laughs> you know I was like, I don't hear any of this. Isabella, crap. You know. I'm trying to listen to it. Does birds mean anything? Red dot. Um, so the powder magazine. Every tour stops here. We're going to be looking at it, but just in a much different light. Um, those, by the way, those are not crosses on the building, those are earthquake bolts. Earthquake bolts are basically turnbuckles. So if we have another earthquake like what we did in 1886, you can tighten those earthquake bolts and it tightens up the building so it doesn't incur any further damage. It's a great idea, it just doesn't work. The only reason I bring them up is because that's part of the reason why we're here. Um, those earthquake bolts were the first ones that Charleston ever put in. You guys have seen them all over town, by the way, in the shape of pineapples and lion heads and all kinds of Charleston charm bullshit. Um, but those are the first set they put in because that's the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. So this building is what I call a familiar. The reason why we're Did here. Did you say I'm dead? I just heard he's dead right at the same we time. Too. Yeah, yeah he's so dead. dead. Maybe we went to the We need to find out who the hell's talking to y'all. Like, we need some names, damn it. Um, this is not a prominent English woman either here, by the way, so we don't have to tiptoe around like what we did with Eliza. Like, when we're, you know, I'm done giving you the history, poke that bear a little bit. This is a kick-ass pirate chick. She'll, you know, kick her in the shin. Did like, she'll give her some pirate? answers. Gaze? Dude, what is gaze? It says stare intently. So, sorry, Webster, over here. <laughs> English major, can't help it. Um, but anyway, that building, it was being constructed at the same time that Anne Bonnie was coming here. So it would be something familiar. It seems like you, all of you guys watch the TV shows, right? So you guys have seen him use that Boo Buddy, that's the teddy bear. Each with of the, you is important. The K2 meter is usually built into it. So they use that because the child would actually recognize that as a toy. We're here in the exact same fashion. This is something Anne Bonnie would recognize because there's not many buildings from that era still here in Charleston, believe it or not. So here's how this goes. This building took 10 years to build. For us adults, does that sound like our government? 10 years, small building? No, yep. not at all. Um, but anyway, our history begins right in the middle of that construction. 1708, follow me. There's a lot of twists in this story. I will slow down on the twist so you guys grab them. 1708, a young lady by the name of Anne Cormack comes here from Ireland. She comes here with her father and his mistress. The mistress is her mother. Is everybody with me so far? Yes. Yep. Okay, the three of them are running away from her father's angry wife. How mad was the wife that she basically kicked her husband and his mistress and child, illegitimate by the way, out of the country to come here? There's no airplanes, it's by boat. It just said the kid. <laughs> so, yeah. they land in Georgetown. Dad bought a plantation, mom dies pretty quickly. That means dad is now sending young Anne, all oh, that grace feels good. Dad is sending young Anne down here to sell anything from that plantation to help keep things afloat. Yeah. So, is that what it said? I just no, got, we're like, gonna have to do something about it. I just got, I just got like four You're words. Not listening at all. Like forty right. seconds ago, I got four words in like two seconds. And do you know what Kyra means? Like, what does that mean? It's a name. Oh. <laughs> so this story can be really long. So let's. I'm gonna try to breeze through it. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait. Yeah. And so, then you can show them all the words. So I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna take a look at all of them, and we're gonna spread out in here. Um, so we're going to take a step back to Ireland for just a second when Anne was just a child. They say she was a badass even back then. At the age of seven, eight, nine years old, remember it's pirate lore, nothing is exact, they say she killed a servant with a knife to the belly. Wow. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten servant, knife, and belly out of three different people where the other two people didn't know what was going on. Again, we get it all the time. Anyway, fast forward, the building's done in 1713. By 1715, pirates are starting to come through Charlestown. Anne is stoked. Why? She's going to fall in love so she can earn her freedom just like a man. So, first guy she falls in love with, yes I said first because there's a handful, that's what makes those stories so damn interesting, we're going to cover them all. First guy is James Bonney, 
You already see where this one's going, right? We've already mentioned their pirate name. Dad didn't approve because he's a pirate. They ran away to Jamaica. They got married and Cormac became Anne Bonnie. However, when she gets down there, she realizes Bonnie, her new husband, is not the Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. This guy turns out to be a privateer. He's a spy for the British. He's a coward in her eyes. So, a few more years go by, she falls in love again. Guy number two. This is John Rackham. Everybody calls him Calico Jack. This is the guy they based your Johnny Depp character off of, in case you were wondering who this guy actually was. Now, Calico it Jack... just said, you don't understand what it means. <laughs> I do know what it means. <laughs> I know, I'm we were like... But his name has specific meaning, which I don't explain until the end. So, oh. Until before we leave. So you all don't know what his name means yet. Okay. And you don't know why they call him Jack when his real name is John. Um, but I explained that before we leave the space. So it's very interesting that you heard that. Yeah. Calico Jack has his own ship. He has his own crew. And wants to be part of the crew. But you can't put a girl on a pirate ship because it's bad luck. Normally I would throw that question back to you, but we got kids in the audience tonight, and we don't need those raunchy answers coming back to me. So, mm -hmm. anyway, he makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy and look like the crew, you can part of the crew, but you're going to be a female in my quarters. She's okay with this because Dad used to cross-dress her as a boy apprentice back home in Ireland to hide her from his wife. She gets it. It's a man's world. So, let's put two and two together. She's a female in his quarters, adults in the room. So, she's eventually going to get pregnant. You cannot have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's <laughs> going to figure out that she's a girl. So, he drops well, her off in Cuba. Cuba. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> she goes to Cuba, where he drops her off, says, go have the baby come over and these are friends of mine, they'll help you out, come back later, and we'll figure it out. She goes and has that baby, but returns with no baby. Oh. We have no idea what happened to that child. No amount of my research, even all the damn pirate books I've had to read has ever revealed that answer. What's interesting for you is that she comes back dressed as a female. This makes Jack pretty pissed off, because now everybody's going to know he let a girl on the ship. What she's going to do to make him even more pissed off is she's going to go flirting with the pirate crew that he just captured. They're down below deck, guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy, to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack captured. Uh -huh. Now we have two females, dressed like males, on the same ship. Her name is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Now, her and Mary became friends, possibly lovers, we're not going to really know for sure, but the British find out where they are. They send a fleet of ships after them to take down one measly pirate ship. The rumor is, is that Anne and Mary were the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight. So, and they only had one bullet flintlocks, because they don't know how to use cannons yet. Obviously, two ladies with one bullet guns are not going to take three on. Again? are not going to take on a whole fleet of Navy ships. They get arrested. As they're being arrested, she looks at her bow and captain, Calico Jack, and she says, I'm sorry to see you here, but if you would have fought like a man, you wouldn't be hanged like a dog. The word dog shows up on your spirit boxes a lot. Now, the judge wants to see the two quote-unquote men that fought back so violently on their own. He's already tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunk pirates that wouldn't fight. They're dead and gone. The two ladies go in front, reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves. The judge doesn't give a shit that they're female. They're still pirates, so he's still going to hang them. We plead our bellies was the last thing they shouted because they're trying to save themselves. They, they're claiming to be pregnant, and you can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he sends them both back to jail, delays the hanging. Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money. So he bails her out, brings her back home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four. We're going to count Mary Reed. We don't really know. So she has four kids and dies at the age of 84. Very abrupt ending because we don't know. I know. It's just like, what the hell? How the hell do you memorize all that shit, right? No, That's like, old. how did they live that old back Yeah, I mean, 84 is pretty good for that. Older is, and think age. about, the, I want you to also remember the date. So, Eliza Pinckney, 1793, died at the age of 70. I've already mentioned how old she was. And Bonnie dies in 1782. So, that's 11 years prior, and she was how many years older? So, that kind of makes, you know, it is a very old age. Um, so, again, to your point, I wasn't sure if you were shaking because no, I no, recited no. it off so damn quick or if it was like, holy shit, what the age was. <laughs> um, I wanted to say, too, it was funny when you said, like, you can't hang a pregnant woman. Didn't it say it was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. When, when you were talking about, like, um, about, like, uh, the dad, I think it was like a dad bails the girl, the woman out. It said relation the second after. We do get a lot of female gender terms here, just so you know. Talk um, but I didn't tell you what happened to Mary Reed. The story's not over. Five months later, she dies in that Jamaican jail from whatever pirates die from in a Jamaican jail. Use your imagination. Most folks will tell you something simple like fever. Use your imagination and make it romantic like scurvy. Why the hell not? So, I'm not going to assign questions here. I'm going to give you a small handful of things I left out on purpose just so you have something to work with. Everything else is fair game. I left out the names of her parents on purpose. That's the father and the mistress. I also left out the city where Anne grew up in Ireland. That's a one-syllable answer. I'll give you that kind of clue. It's 33 again. You guys can damn threes. What's going on over there? I don't know. You guys brought somebody with you. Because threes don't mean anything to me at all. 
like I'm like, going through like all the, the dates. holy number or whatever. It's an angel number. But yeah. You won't get into all that. Like, that's <laughs> not doing angels. We're doing pirates. <laughs> um, uh, the color of Anne Bonnie's hair. That's an easy one. That's red. If you aren't getting answers, just kind of poke a bear and get a one-syllable answer for the color red. Um, but I also left out the name of Calico Jack's ship on purpose. So see what you guys can do. Everything else is fair game. If you want to ask what happens to the baby, I just can't prove it. We're just looking for direct answers that would actually make sense and it would be a little bit more direct. Um, so again, kind of take that for what it's worth. Um, EMF. Addy, we don't get a whole lot of EMF in this location. If we do, it's on this back half. The front half has electrical poles in the corners and parking meters on the other side. So again, it sounds like you're going to probably want to be taking something you know, from Hannah, so that way you can listen in for a little bit. Um, and I don't know how you guys are going to work that out, but I know you want to listen in and kind of see what's going on there. You're We're definitely going to be a new in this thing. location. Or do you um, want to use this for a bit? 772? Is that yes. an issue? Yes. That was there's very the, clear. There's the other oh, part of the so doctor's okay. birthday. I'll actually take that if you two want to listen. Sure. So she just got the numbers 772. I told you I was waiting for the other part of Dr. Lad's birthday. His birthday is July 7th. 77. Seven. We get it. Doubles all the... I wait for those doubles, and I love when they come together. I know you guys had a singular seven, um, but again, the double sevens together kind of confirms like we have, yeah, the two, throw it away. I need the seven seven because it happens all the time. Sevens are relevant here in one of three ways. I have to wait for the secondary clue to see what it belongs to. The double sevens is obviously the doctor. The other seven, John Calhoun, your seventh vice president, is buried on the other side of this wall. We don't really don't hear from him until the month of March because he was born in March and died in March. And the uh, gunpowder magazine serves seven different wars, Here's so I wait for one of the wars to come up mm -hmm. um, to kind of verify what that Thank seven is. So again, the fact that you heard seven, seven, two oh, together, really? I'm excited about that. I'm going to be writing that one down. Here. So this is me excited, everybody. Yeah, you guys see the difference between me and Zach? Like, again, I, I hate to keep referencing Zach Bagan. What do you got? The other building. That's an apartment building. Oh, that's an apartment building now? Yeah, we're talking about that little building up there. Oh, those. Oh. Yeah, people live what? there. What's that? <laughs> Oh, okay. Or that part is actually belongs to the car magazine. Okay. That's where we're going to be going next. No, we're not going there. Like, if you saw something right there. Have I ever been in a reasonable car? Okay. But it's a reason. Gotcha. Oh, so these there? Yeah. Yeah, they just show off all the uniforms and how the gunpowder was held. Not yet. Look at that. I know, didn't he say that there's like a cemetery on the other side of this? Yeah. Oh, is that a church? It is.
Yeah, so I can see Scott over there. Because Scott is right there. You know, but these two things keep going like back and forth. So, do you see the one on the right? Yeah, this it's one here. It's picking up. That light? It's picking up the light, and because the pole is in front of the building, it's going to make it look like a figure. I gotcha. So, ghosts, ghosts aren't that tall. And it may even pick up those cones over there. See the cones? Oh, yeah, yeah. Pick those up because they're in front of the brick wall. I got pole? Hey. Okay. The word heart. And then you guys had five minutes later, and yeah. that was. What do you think of that thing now that you've gotten a chance to listen to it? It's not easy, is it? No. <laughs> you have to like concentrate. Yeah, you do. And those are cheap earbuds too. So when you guys get your recording back. back. Girl, I swear on my life. Maybe I'm just thinking it now. Girl on girl or girl? Something 
What up? Did you guys hear anything interesting? It's hard to hear. I mean, you got. I, it was really hard, like when he was talking, because I was trying to listen to him and well, and the thing. It's hard when you only have it in one ear. It is. It's very hard. I'd rather have it in both. I agree. And I think it would be easier, almost like if you were blindfolded, you know, because then like you concentrate more on the hearing of it. You got anything, Hunter? Was a pirate? Yeah. Lake. Uh, I learned how um, when it goes up, that means there might be a new word. And what is it? Do you know what this is? Oh, is Blake? A name? a name or something? Yeah, that's gotta be like a name. But it's picking up something like next to that. Yeah, because it picks up some sort of like light force. Yeah, I was picking up something over there, but he said it was like the light coming down. It's just like picking up like the side of the garbage thing. Are you hearing anything good, Hannah? I mean, I'm just kind of like picking up everybody else. Sorry. Okay, so can that thing hear our voices? Okay. Yeah. So, this? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure. Uh, Anna, can you hear me? Anna, can you hear me? Perfect. All right. 11.15.
given us so much before. I know. Can she hear you? She's not supposed to hear me. Okay. That's the point. Can you lift up her ear and ask her if she looks like four Never mind. Yeah. Henry Cameron, push through and tell us your occupation. We need something specific to know that you're here. Hunter, come here, buddy. It said 
okay. I'm just trying to, I'm focusing. Like, I got you. You're thinking of a preacher here. Alright, so you can go ahead and stop your recording. Okay.